Mike Taylor Live is presented by Texas Cheer Liquor. And now, live from San Antonio, Mike Taylor. Uh, We're back, man. Good to have all of you boys back in here. It has been, well, it's been, uh, you know, 23 hours since we last signed off with you boys. And that means only one thing. That means that it is time for MT Live again. It is the middle of the work week, and it is time for People I Want to Punch Wednesday, presented by the Law Office of Orlando Kell. Uh, who do you want to punch and why? Jump in here with a chat. Uh, I post all this stuff on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. So if you got a punch, we want to know who it is, who personally deserves to be punched in this world and why. All right. All right. I got a, I got a couple. I don't know if LG doesn't watch the news like he once did, or he's real picky choosy. Did you see a couple of days ago, some asshole got caught going 150 miles an hour up there on I-10 with a kid in the car? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know how fast he was going, but yeah, I heard about yeah, he somebody passed racing. Us. Yeah. We saw him. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were out and we were driving. We were on 1604. Uh, we were coming from here, actually. We were, when was I at your week? Remember we came over the other night for a nightcap? When was that? Three nights ago, two nights oh, ago? Oh, yeah, right after the Cowboys game or overreact. Yeah, it was after, 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 it was after postgame show. So we're driving home. And we had to get back on 1604 to go to our destination. And you were like on the freeway and you see a car in your rearview mirror in your lane going 100 miles an hour coming up to your car. That really pisses me off. It's like, uh, I hope you plan on going around me, bro cheese. Because your instincts are to get out of his way. But you don't want to switch lanes if he does. It's some fuckwad going, you know, a ridiculous amount of speed in the middle lane on the freeway. Comes up behind us. I'm like, uh... Hope he goes around us. And he's like, it was so loud. He almost ran us off the road. It was like a fucking indie car. It was like, Jesus. I think it was a, I think it was a Porsche, I want to say. It was certainly a, it was a European money trap kind of car for sure. And reading the paper the next day that there was a dude going 140 miles an hour on I-10 right up near kind of where we had wound up going. And he had a kid in the car and got popped. And, man, he should have his license revoked for five years. CPS ought to intervene in his fucking scene. So punch the asshole. I don't even know his name. But maybe y'all saw that. If you Google it, you'll find it. Punch the son of a bitch that was going 150 miles an hour on a freeway with a kid in the car. And not that you... It would have been just... It would have been awful without the kid. Because you're taking everybody's lives into your hands when, you, when you're when you out of control fast like that. I know people like to speed in the left lane. I get that. But once you get up to over, once you get to 80, you should stop. Anybody that goes over 80 miles an hour on any freeway in inner San Antonio is a fucking asshole. Fuck you if you go over 80 miles an hour ever on 1604 or 410. Our city is too congested. This is a big city. You get up in Bernie or you get the fuck way the hell out and... Catula, or you go way the hell out to Floresville and floor it. I don't know who cares. It's a country road. You want to be a dip, dipshit cool. If you wipe out, you're only going to kill yourself and one of the cows or something. There are people all over. This is this is, this town has almost two million people in it. Those freeways always have cars on them. God, I hate people that go that kind of that go, that go that kind of fast. I ain't being a man, Karen. If you go more than eighty, you're a fucking asshole. In in the inner city. And we don't have enough cops to pull everybody over that does it. We have a we have a lot of speeders, but man, to have the kid in the car, he was going 140 in his Porsche. So punch that asshole. Uh, I want to punch <gasps> NBA Commissioner Adam Silver as well today. Adam Silver <gasps> just said two weeks ago that the league is going to start cracking down even more so on flopping. The flopping has gotten so over the top in recent years that it's it's comical. It's frustrating for the team that's playing against a dude that flops. John Lowe, please! No, he's, he, he did it as an art form. He, he turned it into an art form and fooled referees. Now it's ridiculous. 
Go look what Anthony Davis did last night against Toronto. Manu never did some bullshit like that. It was like a delayed shooting. He got hit. It's like a full second goes by. And he's just like throwing. He got shot by somebody up at the rafters. Somebody laser beamed his ass from space. Somebody from the grassy knoll. Sure, absolutely, yeah. So he was last night. There was a it was a game winning three for Toronto. They make a three point shot, but they waved off the shot because of an off the ball offensive blocking foul against one of the Raptors on Anthony Davis who I can't stand because he still has the unibrow after all these years. He is the most talented pussy I've ever seen in the NBA. He is a LeBron James dick rider who's never won jack shit on his own. He stays hurt, and he's a big Watch pussy. Watch the language, little boy. Sorry, but he is. Coat, would you, did it, is that uncomfortable? Should I have said coat tail rider? Would you have preferred that? No, you just, you've been a little sailor-ish. Lately? In this open right now. Have I? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just mad. The okay, guy could have yeah. killed me and Nina. He was going well over 100 miles an hour. And when he passed us, the force and the inertia of his car just like rattled our car. That's bullshit. And he has a kid in the car. I mean, that if you, you don't, when you're going that fast, you don't have a fender bender. You have a mass casualty automobile accident. It's awful. Anyway, and punch AD in the, in the balls. And punch, but punch silver. They're supposed to start cracking down on flopping. Not only should the Raptors have gotten a call, not only AD should have been called for flopping in addition to the three-point shot that would have won the game. But no, they weighed the shot off because of the bullshit foul. And the Serbian coach of the Raptors, what's his, I forget his name, Vladislav Taranaranarex. Vladislav Taranaranarex, was, he got mad last night. It was all he could do to not curse in Serbian. I can't believe this is so crappy. I can't do I can't do it. This is bullshit. Oh, I'm so sorry. He, have you seen the Raptors coach? He's extremely Serbian. And he was he went ape crap last night. If I cussed a lot already, I'm sorry. It's just it's people it's, it's Wednesday. It's a violent day. Love you hard, but it's a violent day. All right, who are you punching today and why? Presented by the law office of Orlando Kell. Oh yeah. There we go. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I uh I got a hit list, man. Oh wow! Yeah, I got a lot of punches. Okay. First off, I'd like to start local. Okay. And I'd like to punch this asshole, pedophile UIW instructor. Ugh. Did you hear about this? Saw the headline, but stuff like that I don't normally read yeah. beyond what ha- what is it. I'm not even gonna say his name. I'm just gonna call him Neckbeard. Neckbeard. Hmm. Was arrested by Live Oak Police, Mm -hmm. which is very close to where I like to spend a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You got some, you got some biatches up in Live Oak. Yeah, yeah, something like that. There's good food out in Live Oak. UIW professor. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, get a look at this guy. Um. Anyway, he's the a prep professor of gaming, of all things. Yeah, he got he got gaming. He got caught with (laughs) child (laughs) pornography on his computer. Uh, you mean Troy Mickler? Yeah, I'll say yeah. his effing name. Yeah, let's something like the, that. Let's give yeah. the son of a bitch his name. Look at this guy. He looks like a, he looks like a Viking. Look at this dude. Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Is he a professor or a coke dealer? Yeah, that's a professor. An yeah, incarnate they're... word. It's it's different different times. I mean, man. I know public schools have a hard time finding teachers, but sheesh. <laughs> what's what's crazy about it is he confessed to at like some Christian or Catholic event about mm-hmm. being addicted to child porn. Okay. And whoever he confessed to reported his ass. Good for them. Yeah. And then Live Oak did an investigation and caught him. So. Yeah, you don't get you don't get off from child pornography if you apologize to Jesus for it. Well, you maybe still he, sh- face maybe the he should have confessed to the Pope instead and then he would have got off. He, he went up to Nebraska. And admitted to church officials that he watched ch- child porn and was asking for forgiveness. And good on the uh, whoever he was talking to in Nebraska. Son, come over here and get the good word. What have you done? Come here, just confess your sins and be healed and forgiven by the flesh and the blood of God. Jesus, call he, the cops on this he, motherfucker. He fell for it. He thought he was in, in good company where he could, you know... 
expose his secret and nobody would turn right. him in. Yeah, you just can't. Yeah, it's, you're not. You know, you know, you're not all's not forgiven if you tell a preacher. Come on, man. So punch <laughs> Troy. Punch Troy <gasps> Mickler. Oh, that little Mickler. That's what right. got. He, got, he looks like something out of, of 1885 Sweden or Norway. Ugh. All right. I All got right. some Who more. else? Okay. Yeah, you're rolling. Yeah. There you go. I would like to punch the head of the U.S. Department of Transportation, Secretary Pete Butt. I'm just going to call him Pete Butt because I don't... Budelig? Budajed. Budajed. Do you not keep up with presidential elections either? Not really, no. I want to punch him. You're so out on America. I want to punch... Pete Budajed. I, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I like Pete Budajed. Well, I wanna, I'm, he's getting punched. He looks like <gasps> he looks like one of the uh, Who's in Whoville. <laughs> okay. He does. He looks like the, the head Who in Whoville. I like him, but he looks like a Who. Yeah. I'm going to punch him. Yeah? What I'm going to punch his subordinate, Michael Whitaker. Okay. The okay. head of the Federal Aviation Administration. God knows where this is going. <gasps> oh, are they responsible for what happened to that airplane? Somewhat. Okay. Yeah, somewhat. Okay. And then I want to punch, I don't know these people's names. I got to look it up here. Huh? I want to punch William E. Boeing. <gasps> William He's probably e. dead. Boeing. Yeah, I'm going to punch. That's a The founder yeah, of yeah, Boeing. He's probably dead. Probably dead. I want to punch uh, Dave Calhoun, the president and CEO of Boeing. Oh my God! Well, and Larry Kellner, the chairman of the board. Let me guess: that plane that had the panel rip off was one of those notorious planes that you've ranted about for the better part of six years. Correct. Boeing seven seven thirty seven Max, the piece of shit plane that they've tried to retrofit for three decades now. Yeah. And it just keeps having problems. Did y'all see this Thunderdome? It's ridiculous. Something came loose on a flight. No, that, that's something. The entire freaking door blew off. Correct, but it was because of something on the fuselage that came off, and it because it was of the because force of, of loose bolts. They've discovered right. loose. All right, so the whole right. fleet is grounded now. Right, everything. Yeah, all seven thirty sevens are supposed to be grounded unless. They've gone through the inspection. So there are mm. some that could be in the air. Did y'all see this, Thunderdome? No one got killed, but a T-shirt got sucked off a little boy's body. Yeah, an iPhone got sucked out, too. Damn. And it survived without any damage. They found it? Yeah, they oh, found wow. it with Find My iPhone. Strike <laughs> yeah. one for Tim Cook. Good. No, grief, that's, that's man. great for Tim Cook. That's, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Home Write run. one yeah. up for Tim Cookie. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole damn... A panel came off, ripped the window, blew open, and the whole. And when the window blew open, it pulled the whole section of the plane off. Thank God nobody got. Thank God a person didn't get sucked. Yeah, it out. was the door. It was at Alaska yeah. Airlines, and, and they the, had the land. exit door blew off. Nobody Jesus. was sitting in the seat, which is I find weird because most people oh, here we prefer go. the exit seat. Here we go. But, Why wasn't anybody in that particular seat? It's, you think yeah. it's you calling sabotage? No, no, I'm not calling that. I'm calling Boeing a shitty company, and I'm calling. The last FAA administrators are also at fault too for yeah. allowing Boeing and de uh, to, to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, after the first investigation, the first time the airplanes were crashing, just going nose down, the Lion Air in yeah, Indonesia, uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, they uh, they <clears throat> they tried to uh, fix it with software, and uh, it's, fix this shit, you can't Rick. fix it with software. It's a flaw. It's a fault in the plane. The seven thirty seven Max has to go. It just has to go. It just has to go. I yeah. agree. And, then, and, and they, the they were allowed to hire their own investigators to investigate themselves after the incident. No, I'm going to shut up. What the hell is going on with the transportation here? And why are our airline tickets so expensive compared to the rest of the world? Oh, you I wanna, blame the FAA uh, oh, you and the punch, Transportation Administration. You want to punch Secretary Pete and everybody at Boeing? Everybody. And, it's, it's everybody's at fault okay. it's all the way up. It's because we have no regulation in the airline. And then we let the airlines charge whatever the hell they want. And then mm -hmm. we keep bailing them out. Sure. Well, you can defend them or not. But at some I mean, I, maybe it's not their fault. Officially. It's Boeing's fault. Correct, but I'm going to say... And the you, government for allowing it. But I'm going to say this. You cannot... Alaskan Airlines may be... They, may not, they might need to be done. You can't have that happen. That cannot happen. Yeah, but it's on Is it Boeing. not their fault? Yeah, Are we sure it wasn't some I mean, dipshit technician? planes get blown out of the air and airlines still continue Some on. mechanic who was late for dinner no, and No, because they found, they found loose bolts on other Boeing planes yeah. all around the, the nation. 
When is the last time that you had to fly one of those and you're like, fuck, and you just had to go ahead and do it? Probably like a year ago. Yeah, you probably yeah. didn't like it either. I think you tweeted about it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I sent a picture and I said, yeah. This is my last flight. I love everybody. Yeah, I said something <laughs> like that. Like, I leave everything to my mom. <laughs> <You know? laughs> leave it all to the no-go Ellie and my mom. <laughs> yeah, but come on now. Dang. How long are they no, going to operate bad. like that? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Airbus has their... their history as well yep. you know and they're no they're no saint but yeah. still boeing is just running unchecked anybody else no that's it that's okay it, yeah. cool cool all right very good now, nice work he hadn't been punching folks lately but he's made up for it today all right it's barbecue season i have in front of me here flyers this is the well not a flyer this is a sponsorship sheet sponsorship sheet sponsorship sheet say that three times so it's barbecue season. The turn of the calendar into January means that we are getting ready for the 2024 Mike Taylor Cooking for the Kids Barbecue of 2K24. Is this the fifth one? Fifth annual, I want to say? Good guard. Good, good, These are our kids. Good guard. All right, man, and we need your help. We need it since it's, and we always start this early because y'all know how we do. Hey, man, when is it? April 6th? Shit, wake me up on the 5th. I understand that our city, we like to do things last minute because we're busy, and I understand that. But as the broadcaster and the head man of this show, it is my responsibility to start mentioning this, even though it's still only the second week of January. It is never too early to start getting ready for Barbecue 2K24. We need everything. We need, uh, well, we need sponsors. We have a lot of different packages this year for sponsors. We need volunteers. Um, if you want to volunteer, we're going to find something for you to do. This thing has gotten bigger every year. We always need people to help out. Um, and we need barbecue teams. We already ha we already have teams that have signed up, actually. We have six teams that have already signed up just because they, they like it so much and they wanted to come back from last year. I haven't even solicited any barbecue help till today, but we already had six teams. Just They called. They reached out in the last couple of months. and like, when's barbecue next year? Um, it's in April. Can we go ahead and sign our team up? Yeah, you can. Go. Cool. So shout out to Bermea BQing, On the Mark, Up in Smoke, Los Cousins Barbecue, Frank, <laughs> and Alex. Uh, they'll come up. They're, they're, they're still thinking about their team names. Is that Tex-Mex, Frank? It might be. Okay. I think Frank might want to go with a different name. What are you doing this year, Tex-Mex? Y'all going to stay with the same name? or Y'all should change it up. Homes. So it's Saturday, April the 6th. At the Boys and Girls Salvation Army location on Peacock, right there near Woodlawn Lake, like we always do, you can get a VIP ticket for only 25 bucks. You can just get a plate, come and go, pick up plate for 10 bucks. But we need volunteers. We need barbecue teams for the cook-off. And we need sponsors. I mean, from everything from uh, just from the, no, the barbecue teams, it's 150 bucks. You, know, you get five, six, seven dudes. Y'all all y'all all pitch in 150 bucks ain't nothing to enter a team, and you can get it. We got T-shirts for sale for fifteen dollars. Uh, event poster, of course, which the great Marty Layall always does for us every year. It's only what is the what is the T-shirt? The oh, the poster's twenty bucks. And, and the work that Marty does on the barbecue. Do I have a poster behind me today? I don't think we have one in the room today. The work he does is so much more valuable than twenty dollars. We damn near give them away. So every, I got all kinds of stuff. Reach out to me if you're interested in helping us with barbecue this year. Everything from event sponsor, club sponsor, entertainment sponsor, booth sponsor. Hell, we need people to sponsor the trash pickup. So here's what I did not know. Because I'm still, after four years, I'm still a novice when it comes to putting all these, these events are hard and they require a lot of stuff and city ordinances and licenses and shit. I found out last year that it's 500 bucks to have a dumpster to throw away trash. Good God. And that was money that I didn't realize it was part of the overhead of putting on the barbecue every year. So I told them, we need a dumpster sponsor. You want to be the official dumpster sponsor? Hey, there ain't no shame in that. And it's for 750 bucks. You get acknowledgement on social media releases. You get, we kiss your butt for three months on this show. You get VIP tickets to the barbecue. You become my best buddy. So whether you want to sponsor the T-shirts or the trophies or the stage or the supplies or the ticketing and the printing sponsors, supply sponsor, you can sponsor the food, the meat, and the chicken, the sausage, all kind of stuff. Reach out to me. It is never too early to start talking barbecue. And now that we've flipped the page on 2K24, 
April 6th, going to be here before you know it. All right, all right, thank you very much. All right, we have a Texas female teacher diddling report to get into, kind of, kind of. All right, techni- technically speaking, thank you. So I, I'm, I'm, I'll run this by you. I don't think this one should count. So she got busted here. She got busted up in Como County. But it was a case out of the state of Missouri. She's porking this teenager in Missouri. I don't know if she was on the run or she was here for the holidays or whatever, but she got busted up in Missouri. What's the name of the segment? Well, it's called the Texas Female Teacher Didlin Report. Then I think it counts. She yeah. was physically yeah, here. I think it, if she's a teacher from Texas. Well, she, but she was teaching in Missouri. Oh. So the hmm. quote unquote victim. Where is she? Where was she? <laughs> booked? Where was she booked? Colmall County. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It counts. All she's right. Still a teacher. Something called Haley Carmack. 26 year old teacher mm-hmm. from the state of Missouri. Multiple counts related to an alleged extremely inappropriate sexual relationship with a 16-year-old boy back in Missouri got busted up in Comal County last week. According to KRCG 13 News in Missouri, she left there on December the 23rd. And right after she had left, I guess while she was out of town is when everything just blew up on her. Or maybe she came here to get away from it, knowing it was about to get out. She was charged in Pulaski County, Missouri. I don't know much about my... I don't, I'm don't. i not up to speed on my Missouri geography. I know that they have Springfield and the University of Missouri. And St. Louis is technically in that state, although it's on the border. And they have the Ozark Mountain Range that runs right through oh, the so middle. They, so they're charging her... Locally there, because that's where the crime yeah. was committed. So she's so, yeah, being extradited it, back. To yeah, Missouri. it doesn't count. Okay, because she's just hiding out here. Right, she's yeah. on the lamb. She was on that dick. Now she was on the lamb. <laughs> I'm gonna roll. With it. A warrant was issued. Yeah, back in uh, Pulaski, but official, but uh, uh, law enforcement up in Comal County helped make the arrest. Her bond's been set at two hundred and fifty thousand. And she's still she's in Comal County Jail. I guess she's going to be sent back to Missouri. Here's what makes this even more weird: the father of the teenage boy that was banging her knew about it the whole time. Okay, I actually read about this and one. didn't. Yeah, care. I didn't. I didn't see the Texas connection in there, but yeah, he's like high fiving little Johnny as he comes in the door after a rendezvous with Mrs. Car, whatever her name is, yep. Carmack. And using other students as lookouts. Sure. She taught math at La- Laquay High School in Pulaski County. She was away from the district since December the 8th, according to the statement from the district's superintendent. The student, the victim, I'm sure he feels just distraught and it's going to be, he's going to need years of therapy after. Being raped repeatedly by the hot math teacher. He told cops that a classmate had showed the student. Uh, okay, what happened was he showed a classmate pictures of him. Of, of, of him. So, like, he apparently had scratches on his back from her while they were banging. She was scratching his back, and he took a picture of it and was showing it off to his homies. Check it out. He was so distraught from what happened to him that he was showing off the pictures of the scratches on his back to his boys. And that's how it got out. The student that, like the buddy who saw the pictures, he he was in, he was interviewed by officials and he went ahead and came clean and said, yeah, he knew about it. And he felt like for the whole semester that Miss Carmack had been, quote, too friendly with all of the students. And everybody loved Miss Carmack because she dressed inappropriately at school. Detectives applied for a search warrant for her phone, and when she was and when she refused to provide the password um, on lawyers' advice, that's when they went ahead and went did a deep dive into this chick's history and found out that this boy had been deep diving into her into her coot coot and other holes. <laughs> <laughs> and the dads admitted it. Yeah, I knew about it. 
He admitted, so according to the Express News, the father allegedly admitted to a Pulaski County detective that Mrs. Carmack was at his house before she left for Texas. She stopped, over, she stopped over for a quickie before she came down here to visit family or whatever. And he told the cops up there that the, the dad says he knew of the relationship. And he continued to cover for them. And other friends and his other friends did too. But he showed pictures to the wrong kid and one, you know, then it got out. Well, God dang, man. Have you seen a picture they, of her? How old is the kid again? 16. <sighs> Are they pressing charges? Like, or is it just it's a crime, so they have to? No, it's a crime. They have yeah, to. Yeah, they have yeah, to. This is this is hmm. her. If it was Can you zoom in on that? No. 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 When we get enough money for a camera operator. Oh crap. All right. Well. Yeah. Here's her mug shot. She doesn't look too happy. Yeah. She's not ugly. Golly, man. I'm saying I'm like the parents are cool with it. The I dad mean, dad's cool with the it. The only Messed up part is the fact that she's a teacher and that he's a student. Well, Child Protective Services is investigating the dad now, too. What what the fuck else you got going on here? Yeah, I guess so. <sighs> yeah. I guess if you reverse the sexes, it would be, you know, we'd be asking for the guillotine. Of course. Yeah. Well, because that's immoral. Yeah. When female teachers have sex with students, it's awesome. <laughs> it's ill-advised because it's going to ruin your career. But when it's flipped around, that's just disgusting. Those sons of bitches ought to be castrated. There is a difference. There is. <laughs> uh, don't y'all want to fight about it? We can, but there there is a difference. So okay, so on a technicality, she while she got arrested here, she didn't she didn't nah, she didn't do not, the deed here. She doesn't teach here. She didn't teach. I thought here. maybe she taught here and then no. went to Missouri, but no, she no. doesn't teach here. All right, all right. We got Cowboy news, man. How about them Cowboys? Yeah! We got a big playoff game in case you boys forgot. Uh, on Sunday night, we are doing Cowboys Overreact presented by the Law Office of Orlando Kill. Uh, 3.30 the kickoff at Jerry World. Adala Cowboys. Yes, Here Cowboys. Cowboys and Packers and an illustrious history between those two will resume in the postseason Sunday night at 3.30. As Jordan Love, who has thrown 18 interceptions against just one... Uh, no, no, I take it back. <laughs> thrown 18 touchdown passes and just one interception over like the last nine games. The Packers have gotten pretty good in the second half of the season. Really, since the late October, early November, Jordan Love just... The light clicked on. He looked like a bust the first half of the season. But you turn the clock to November... And the light came on for that kid, and they've been good. They've won seven out of ten going into this game, three in a row. Um, the Cowboys are still a seven and a half point favorite, but as I sit here right now, I don't. I might take the Packers and the points for sure. It's going to be. I think it's going to be a hard fart game here. Um, there is Cowboys news today, and of course, we put up with this every year right before the first playoff game, uh, when other teams start trying to interview guys, namely Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn apparently has the interest uh, of the Carolina Panthers and the Washington Commanders and maybe even the L.A. Chargers, all who need coaches. Tennessee shockingly fired Mike Grable yesterday. I don't know if Quinn's name's been linked to Tennessee, but you have to think that they would at least give Dan Quinn a look-see. And Dan Quinn is, once again, heavily, heavily sought after by many teams. He probably could have taken a head coaching job in each of the last two years, stayed loyal to McCarthy, stayed loyal to his guys here, wanted to see this through. And you got to think that if the Cowboys mix in a good run here and win at least two games in the playoffs, then Dan Quinn may go ahead and pull the trigger and go somewhere because I think he does want a second chance as a head coach. Um, every year also, we have to go through the Will McClay rumors, and he always gets a big raise and stays. We'll see what happens. So Will McClay is the under the radar. Basically, he's the he's the quasi GM of the Cowboys. He's not the GM on paper. Jerry's the GM on paper. Steven's the director of player ops. But Will McClay is the director of player personnel. Will McClay is essentially the quasi general manager of the Cowboys and has been for a handful of years. He is the head of the draft, and the Cowboys are one of the five, six, seven best drafting teams in the NFL. He is their personnel guru, and good on Will McClay. He basically, you know, the the, the, the Amari Cooper trade, y'all bashed him for that, and that's fine. Uh, but how about that Stephon Gilmore trade? Knock on wood, Gilmore hopes to play this week with that bum shoulder. 
Um, how about that trade for uh, Brandon Cooks? I mean, the, this is Will McClay's recommendation. Now, Jerry has veto power because he's Jerry. Um, but if the Cowboys ever get over the hump and ever win two playoff games and ever find that hole they've been looking for. I want me some glory hole. Will McClay has had just as much to do with that as anybody in personnel. The Carolina Panthers also need a general manager. They, according to Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network, they want to interview Will McClay for their GM spot, as do the Commanders de Washington. So we go through this every year. Dan Quinn, you figure I would have figured would have been gone already, but he's still there with his hat on backwards, kicking ass up in the booth, coaching defense, and Will McClay. Uh, really don't want to lose those two guys. Those two guys are two of the probably 10 most important human beings in the entire organization. And I don't want to have to be replacing them, but such is life when you have success. So there's that. All right. Uh, somebody, people got confused yesterday. A couple of people DM me about like, what's the deal with trying to find the show. I just want to read uh, real quick. We are, we have, it's love you hard. We're trying to see this. This is the brand here. We, 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 we spent a year plus building Mike Taylor brand. Mike Taylor is simply a show on Love You Hard TV. We're, we want to eventually become a podcasting empire. We want a network of shows. <clears throat> well, this is the flagship. Love show. You Hard TV on YouTube. Correct. Yes. Yes. You always want to correct me on that, right? Yes. So because how do they everyone, find me on Spotify. That's still, Mike Taylor Live. That's still the show. Yeah. That's the way it works. So the YouTube channel is called Love You Hard. You go to Love You Hard on YouTube, then find me there. To still to find me on Spotify, the way they, they don't do, they don't put network. Like, I can't go to the ESPN network on Love You Hard. It's got to be the name of the shows. Although, I, I will say this. I don't want to get all, this is an ass whip for listeners probably, but like Dan Levitard's, like Metal Lark, Metal Lark Media is who runs Dan Levitard's show. Dan is the flagship show, but they have a bunch of different shows in that umbrella. And so on Spotify, it's like it's Dan Levitard and Friends. They just feed you all the different shows. I guess it's kind of a loophole or whatever, but it's an ass whip trying to find Dan Levitard because I like Dan Levitard, but I don't want to listen to his friends. I want to listen to him only. Any hooch. Love You Hard TV is the network now. Mike Taylor Live is simply a show on Love You Hard TV on YouTube. I just wanted to get that out of the way. And it's funny because I mentioned this yesterday and I had two people without fail ask, why Love You Hard? Where does love you hard come from? You know, I, I haven't cussed in like 10 minutes now. You told me to quit cussing so much. So the scene, <clears throat> I'm due for a cuss word. Get the fuck out of here, man. Get my knife. The scene in Silence of the Lambs. You know, when Buffalo Bill, ding, ding. I'm crying. The, the famous scene where they play the song Wild Horses, you know. We can't play Wild Horses on our YouTube page because the flag is for copyright. The scene where Buffalo Bill's like, he's putting on his lipstick. I'd, I'd fuck. I'd fuck me so hard. Oh, wait. So we were doing a bit one day, Jim Bob and I, back in the early days of the radio show. And obviously I couldn't say, I'd fuck me so hard. I was doing the, I was doing the fake Buffalo Bill. Oh, wait. Well, she a great big fat person. Well, she a great big fat person. You can use my phone. Precious darling, are you all right? One of the great characters in cinema history. You don't know what pain is. Now it puts the lotion in its skin or it gets the hose again. That dude. The Littmans don't live here anymore. So we were doing a bit. We were doing a parody. And obviously I couldn't say, I'd fuck me so hard. On the ticket. <laughs> So we had to go with, I'd love me so hard. So that's how Love You Hard got rolling. That is a spinoff bit from the Silence of the Lambs scene. Because, of course, Love You Hard originates to one of the most disgusting, disturbing scenes in movie history where he then tucks his penis and, and, and all of his things in between his legs and... Does the little jig there in the room? Okay, so we need to Did get. Did you us, not know that? Uh, I knew it. I just okay. forgot about it. You've you've explained it hundreds of times. Yeah, but, that's the story. Um, we need to get I'd love a me uh, so hard. a Silence of the Lambs poster now to go with your Exorcist poster. We or, do yeah. for Halloween next year. No, for every day. Oh, where is my yeah. Exorcist poster? 
Uh, I have it put away. I'm well, waiting to get a frame for it. Oh, oh thanks, Ruben from uh, Cafe Don Juan. Oh, up what's in up? Ten dollars. LG, thanks for repping the T-shirt. We'll definitely sponsor something for barbecue this year. Thank you. I'll reach out to you, Ruben. Thanks, Holmes. Yeah, I need to go by there and get some food. They got they got some good. It's been a minute, tacos. and I'm hungry too. Yeah. I had a weak small breakfast. XX Hustler 210 XX. Mike, it's 150 to sign up a cooking team. Yes, sir. That's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. I think our goal this year is to get 35 teams, I want to say. Um, maybe more if we have the, if there's demand. 40. Um <laughs> 35. So reach out to me. Um, shoot me an email if you're interested, XX Hustler 210 Hustler XX. My email is Mike Taylor Show at gmail.com. All right, all right. Adrian's in here. By April the 6th, the Cowboys will have imploded in the playoffs, so maybe it's only fitting that Jerry sponsor the barbecue dumpster. Eee, I like it. Fun with Cowboy meltdowns. Yeah, but you'd have to set it on fire. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I know. We can't have that. Um, text makes Frank. Buenos dias, muchachos. It is barbecue number five. Okay, I thought it was. Same name for us. Come and smoke it. Okay, let me write that down on there. Hang on. Sorry, Frank. I wasn't sure if you're going to go with something else. All right, cool. I'm going to write that in there. Come and smoke it. Not that kind of coming and not that kind of smoking. Talking about smoking meat. So, so to speak. My son is Alec. Oh, my bad, Frank. And I've met I've met his son. I think I'm available for any questions. Yeah, Frank is the head. He is the head of the committee. There is no way I'm able to do this barbecue the way we do it without a committee. And uh, Tex Mex Frank is El Jefe over there. Frank's also the official Photoshop guru. Yeah, that's yeah. how that's how he, he got famous on our show. Yeah. He yeah. hasn't delivered a gem lately. We need we need a gem, Frank. Yeah, what's we up, Frank? Something. Come on, man. That's bullshit. I'm gonna fire you. Get back up on gym. it. I'm kidding. All right, Mister C Bad. Please step into the office. Taylor, the FCC would like to have a conversation with you, Mayor. I'm going to punch Taylor <laughs> for not mentioning Bonnie and Clyde called the Wagner Hotel in Fort Worth their favorite place to stay. Oh, well, you know, I was it was an off the cuff. I was I was I forgot about that part. Uh, we were talking about the hotel explosion yesterday in Fort Worth, the old Wagner Hotel. And by the way, Mr. Seabad, you're going to be a smart ass. You misspell Wagner. It's not Wagner like Wagner High. It's Wagoner, like W-A-G-G-O-N-E-R. Wagoner, like a Wagoner. Wagoner. They were one of the biggest ranchers in America uh, in the late 1800s and 20th century. I was shaken by that explosion because I was hoping that I don't know anybody or know anybody that knows anybody that was affected by that explosion in Fort Worth. But it's the old Wagoner building turned into the Sandman Hotel. It's a good name for a hotel, the Sandman. Anyhow, mm, bring me a dream. Mm-hmm. All right, so there's that. Thank you for the barbecue confirmations, uh, Frank. So come and smoke it. What's Alex barbecue team name going to be? Let me know that. All right. Um, this show brought to you by Orlando Kell, the official lawyer of Thunderdome, the official Man, we go to when we need jurisprudence or we have jurisprudence issues, we go to Orlando Kell. Cool name, too, but a damn good lawyer. Um, reach him at 210-775-4995. He specializes in family law, and they really, really take a shine to helping men, dads. If you are in the middle of a divorce or you're about to be in one or you've been served with papers and you need a family lawyer, Orlando Kell's the guy. Do not try and do a divorce on your own. You will get ucked with an F. Um, maybe you've already been divorced, but maybe you need like a decree change or some such. You need to, you need to have a hearing. Things have changed with your status. Uh, it's a pain in the ass to get a decree changed. Even if you've been divorced for years, especially if you, if you have kids and Orlando can help with that too. hit him up at 210-775-4995. You can email him at Orlando kill law at Gmail, Orlando kill law at Gmail. All right, we got a red kettle payoff I got to do today. So maybe a little more production value would be cool uh, if, you're, if you're down with it, LG. This is the last one. Well, and it's a two-parter, too. <laughs> so we got one more. We got this today and then one tomorrow, but it's for the same, it's for the same people. Shout out to longtime Thunder Numbers uh, Sunburst Gymnastics Academy. 
one of the great what gymnastics, up, one of the great gymnastics schools in South Texas. Longtime Thunderdomers and supporters of our efforts. Sponsors of Thunderdome Field. Correct. He hates he hates when we mention it, but it's true. Sunburst sponsors Thunderdome Field up at up at San Antonio City Soccer Club on the far north side. So it's a two-parter today because he put in double the money. Part one. So Nathan wants, let's see if I can read this to you. I've, I took a screenshot of it. Oh, geez. I, have, I may have to just get permanent freaking glasses. I have to, I have to, I have to resort to my glasses too damn often here. Let's see if I can find it. I'm not prepared, LG. Oopsies. Here we go. All right. Segment one, and we'll do this. We'll do the second one tomorrow. Segment one from Sunburst is: we want, I want your top three to five athletes, and what their sport would be if they were not in the sport they played in, current or past. Okay. My favorite, my my favorite, my favorite three to five athletes. And what their sport would be if they didn't play the current sport they played, or it could be a retired ball player. Okay. And there's one addendum here. We can't use LeBron. He doesn't count because obviously Le- LeBron could have been an NFL tight end. All right. Who's your favorite? Who are your favorite athletes of all time? Randall Cunningham? Mr. No. Mr. Eagles fan? Do you mm-hmm. have favorite athletes of all time? Manny, pa- on, Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> He's one of them. Ginobili sure, is probably, wrong. Ginobili is probably my top. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah Manu. Yeah, yeah. Man, my fa- so my favorite baseball player of all time is Pudge Rodriguez. I don't know that Pudge could have played any other sports. He's my height and squatty and dumpy. He was made to catch. Maybe, maybe ping pong with that unbelievable hand-eye coordination Pudge had. I think Pudge could have been a gold medal ping pong champion had he had he tried to. My favorite basketball player is Manu. I mean, come on now. Manu would have been a world champion bullfighter, right? Is there any question on that with Manu's elusiveness? Although he's real tall. I mean, being 6'6", probably not the best thing. But Manu's so elusive, so agile, so hand-eye coordinated. Manu would have been one badass bullfighter. And he's tough as shit. He literally gave a nut to the fighting Wimby's organization. We don't say Spurs. Not, not, not right now. Apparently, they're filming a documentary about him right now as we speak. Manu? Yeah. He's being followed around by cameras. The organization's doing one? I have no clue who's producing it, but it's happening. Probably the same producers that did that that series they had all last season. I forgot the name of it already, but, already, but like the organization produced a long, several episodes documentary just like sitting down with Iceman and old players like David and like even even like I mean like obscure ball players were coming in for the sit down. I think Avery was on there. I didn't know there was a Manu documentary. I got to get all of it. They're filming it now. Yeah, and it's it, being filmed right now. Yeah, interesting. You have any idea what they're going to call it? No idea. Ought to be called no. basketball bullfighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One big old wiener and one giant ball. He literally gave one to the organization. Who's your favorite football player of all time? That's a hard uh, one for me. Yeah, I can't. I don't know. Aikman and Irvin, it's a tie for me. Football. Troy slash Mike, that's a tie. It's 1A and 1B. Mike would have been an excellent porn actor with his <laughs> powerful as he pump that ball and the things that things that man did in the 90s off the field in the metro sex there were women who still can't see right from hanging out with michael (laughs) (laughs) i've been crossing for 25 years Yeah, there it is. So Pudge would have been a great ping pong player in eight. Uh, Manu would have been an incredible bullfighter, and Michael Irvin could be a professional. <laughs> Mike should start an OnlyFans page. He'd be a millionaire by the month. Some of the great athletes that we've had, like like 
that come to mind, Steph Curry. Steph Curry could have played in the PGA. He's so effing good at golf. Steph also could have been a damn good soccer player. I've seen him play in person. Golf Steph or Curry. soccer? Golf. Yeah, he's yeah. he's he's incredible. He was doing, I saw him doing trick shots with Phil Mickelson. Yeah, he's awesome at it. He's got like two or three holes in ones, and he has to play part time because he's so busy. Mike had one, one shaft, many holes. Tim Duncan would have been a world champion swimmer had he stayed in swimming for sure. Dirk Nowitzki would have been a. I think Dirk could have been a pro tennis player. That was his jam in the, in Germany growing up was tennis and handball. Dirk's mom is like one of the greatest female handballers of all time. Not that low and not that Lauren Boebert kind of handballing. The actual sport. <laughs> Romo's a damn good golfer. Tony Romo could have been a scratch borderline PGA Tour player had he gone to that instead. Draymond Green could have been a damn good MMA mixed martial artist the way he likes to fight. But the greatest like athlete, crossover athletes ever, you know who one of the like the, one of the five greatest, maybe the maybe the greatest lacrosse player of all time is the NFL Hall of Fame running back Jim Brown, the late, great Jim Brown. Jim was, I think he's the only human being that's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Lacrosse Hall of Fame, of all things. Allen Iverson had every major college in the country wanting him to play quarterback in college, but he stuck with basketball. Obviously, Dion, Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker. Herschel made the 1992 U.S. bobsled team. And of course, Jim Thorpe is probably the Jim Thorpe's. He's probably the one. He's the one guy that's gotten paid money to be in the most pro leagues of all any American ever, like baseball, football, um, track and field. I want to say I want to say Jim played. Uh, Jim played baseball. Jim played pro football, obviously. And he was he won the decathlon in the Olympics, and got stripped of his medals because he was. Because he because of he took money to play pro baseball while he was training for the Olympics because he needed the money. So there it is. That's it. My favorite Pudge Rodriguez, Nathan, for you. Pudge, ping pong, <laughs> Manu bullfighting, and Michael Irvin pornography, porn pro. There it is. Hopefully he's not playing our segment out loud at the gym where all the kids are on the palm of horse. I, I see Manu as more of like a like a tango guy. He's like the award winning tango dancer. <laughs> If <laughs> Manu grows a mustache and like gets it all waxed up, wears the Zorro hat. I can see that. See that too, dude. <laughs> all right, we got Spurs. We got Spurs. I mean, ooh, ooh, we got fighting Wimbies, brother. I'm, I'm trying to get used to it. We got the fighting Wimbies tonight. Spurs. Against the against the Detroit plays like Pistons. Get it? Plays like Pistons versus the Wimbies. The only team in the NBA with less victories than San Antonio is Deet, and that's where the Wimbies are tonight. So you would think that if they were ever going to get another win, tonight would be a good night. Although the Pistons have played better since they won last week for the first time in how many ever games. The news of the day, and I say this for the end because, like I always say with these things, these out-of-town reporters thinking that they know what the Spurs are thinking – I always take it with a giant block of salt. So, yes, I saw this report from M. Night Sham Shamalama Ramaya. That he, the director? No, Sham Sham Sharnia. Sham, what's it? Shams, sh, Sham Shangdong. I can't remember the dude's name. He's a respected, he's a reputed writer in the NFL, in the, in the NBA. Sham Sharania. I, just, I, I couldn't think of it, so I rolled with M. Night. M. Night okay, Shyamalan. I thought there was going to be some weird twist at the end of the story. He's saying that the Spurs have an interest in bringing back DeJounte Murray. He has not fallen out of favor in the whole Atlanta, but the Hawks suck, and they're always going to suck. The Hawks really should fold their franchise because they're never going to win anything, and Murray's probably getting a little antsy. He's getting on in years. He's into his. He's still in his prime. He's still an all star level kind of guy. And the Isn't Spurs he need point guards. Isn't he fighting for time though with Trey Young over there? Well, they 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 intermingle a lot. Yeah, they play together a lot, and it's just not working. Trey Young is not very good. He's a damn good scorer, but I don't know. I don't, he don't play no D. And Dejounte's a great 
defender, defender and a good scorer. He's DeJounte Murray, for Pete's sake. And I know that he talks shit on the one he left. He was had some bitterness. But he also he has more pros than cons playing here. And hopefully he's grown up some in the last couple of years. And every time he sees Pop, they bear hug each other. There's no bad blood. You bet your ass I want DeJounte Murray back in here. The Fighting Wimbies desperately need help. And... I'm, I'm, this is, I'm not calling for, oh, we need to do something for the sake of doing something because I don't, think, I don't think there is a trade you can make right now if you're the Wimbies that is pointless. There's no such thing as let's just make a trade for the hell of it in San Antonio because they need to, they need to send a message that they want to win now. Boys camp is over. Patting each other on the asses and saying well, it's a process, that's bull crap. It's over. Pop said, what, three months ago now, it's time to start winning. Or three weeks ago, it's time to start winning. You play to win the game. Even if I have to make changes, you know, and Trey Jones has been starting at point guard. Thank God. I hope that stubborn old goat pop is going to stick with that um, for the rest of the season. But Trey could use some help. Trey Jones is a solid point guard off the bench for a good team. But with this thing, he needs to be the starter. But you go bring Murray back, that would be awesome. I don't, I, I'm, look, outside, obviously, Wimby will never be traded. I don't want to trade Devin Vassell. I love him. Everybody else, though, you can talk me into. But I don't, it doesn't have to be DeJounte Murray. Just go get somebody else that actually has played point guard before in the NBA. Put a freaking want at, wanted point guard. If you played point guard at any point in your life, you're needed in San Antonio because we only have one. They have got to go bring somebody else in here. If for no other reason than to send the message to the room that th- don't forget this is still a business. We are paying you to go five and thirty, and we're not pay- we're not paying you to go five and thirty, but we are paying you. This is not a developmental league. This is not a developmental organization. It's time to win. Got pissed the other night watching Wimby scream as he walked off the floor in Cleveland after another hard fart loss. He's tired of it. Send a message that you're serious about winning by doing something. doesn't have to be a blockbuster where you bring Murray back, although I'd be absolutely for it. And if you think, if you want to hold what he said against the organization against him, then you ain't serious about winning. If you're, you know, and I'm talking about the people that have like ripped on DeJounte. I don't care if, I don't care if he made fun of Greg Popovich's brother i don't know they need they need people and if they're willing to bring murray back in here then damn it i say do it go get anybody in here but hell yes on dejounte murray all right that's it we're done thank you boys very much for being a part of this one i appreciate that very much show brought to you by the greatness that is texas cheer liquor the official liquor store of taylor live and thunderdome there are nine locations in and around i was up there last night at the location on uh 1604 and Culebra. And shout out to a, a, a guy who came in last night and said, what's up? Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind y'all coming over to say what's up. I'll be at the other store today, uh, later this evening, uh, the Evans and Bull Verde location. So come in there and buy some, buy some hooch and say what's up and chop it up with me. I'm, I'm always looking to kill the time with Thunderdumbers in there. If y'all come in, it's good to be, meet people. So it's Texas Cheer Liquor. Uh, we got a big cowboy game on Sunday. And as you know, you can't buy hooch on Sunday in this state. So if you need a refill, refresher for your place, maybe you're going to watch the game at some dude's house or whatever, y'all get go. make sure you get in there before Saturday night. We close at 9 o'clock. It is Texas Cheer Liquor. Don't matter where you live, there's nine locations all over the city. So you, you can find one close to you. It's Texas Cheer Liquor, the official liquor stove of Thunderdome and MT Live. It is Texas Cheer Liquor. Tomorrow is people like as a Fart Drop Thursday, our final show of the week. Uh, I'm excited to get the week over. I'm excited for the Cowboy game. I want to get the Cowboy game here. I'm excited for postseason football. And we'll be at the Ringer for Overreact on Sunday. Ringer at jones Maltzberger and Thousand Oaks. Uh, I'm going to be watching the game there. We're going to do Overreact, presented by Orlando Kell Law Office, from the Ringer Pub. So come watch the game with us Sunday. And stick around and watch us do post game show. Will the Cowboys season come to an end Sunday or will they advance? Whatever they do, we'll overreact to it all Sunday night. But we'll do this again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Love you, Heart Thunderdome. See you in here manana. Peace out. I need a taco. Your shirt reminded me of it. I'm hungry. Bye.
Poppy. Mike Taylor Live is presented by Texas Cheer Liquor. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you. Why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? This is a rock bound.